Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 19th January 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. You may visit the website superiorprofit.co to know more about us and the trading systems that are available from Superior Profit. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we we'll look at the two commodities oil and gold using technical analysis. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the direction of the market. We'll study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of market ETFs. Along with aligning our trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study that using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade examples shared in the traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. We begin our commodities analysis with oil futures, CL. We are looking at it using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on template. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us to decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after a sharp drop, oil hit the memory trend line support, created an indecisive shape candle, and from there went up for three successive weeks. When it was reversing from the weekly memory trend line, I had suggested that there was a buying opportunity in oil at that time. Since then, price has gone up nicely. In the daily chart, price went up from the bottom. This week it moved sideways for a while and on Friday went up and gave us a cyan color candle. That is a bullish signal. The weekly candle shape and color are also bullish. Oil is continuing to give bullish indications. If you took a long trade, right at the memory support line, then you might book partial profit by now and hold on to the remaining position with trailing stop, trying to let profit run. How to apply trailing stop? You can use the Q protection signal for that. The magenta dots are used for trailing stop for a long position. At the right edge, the trailing stop is at this price point. You can hold on to the remaining position with a trailing stop here. If price continues to go up, the Q protection signal will also continue to go up. You can keep on using that as your trailing stop, thereby trying to catch as much profit as you can if oil continues to move upward. Gold future GC using at a glance template. Three weeks ago, I mentioned that gold displayed an indecisive shape candle. That candle had a long upper tail. Next week's candle also had a long upper tail, and this week's candle is also having a long upper tail, showing that gold is unable to continue to go up. This week's candle color turned yellow, neutral, and it displayed a bear release signal. 
this is not a time to take new long position in gold. In the daily chart, gold displayed the bearish headwind signal at the very top. Since then price couldn't go up, it moved effectively sideways and then on Friday it fell down. It is inside a triangle pattern formed by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. You may not look for any trend following trade unless gold can come out of this triangle pattern. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ and NYSE composite index using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and weekly interval, it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions, not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Both NASDAQ and NYSE went up for four successive weeks. Last week, looking at the memory resistance in the NASDAQ chart, I mentioned that NASDAQ may continue to go up to the memory resistance line and we should be cautious when price goes there. This week price peers above the memory resistance in NASDAQ. NYAC is still some distance away from the memory resistance line. None of NYAC and NASDAQ are overbought. We know that because there is no green dot appearing on top of the candles. Because they are not overbought, it is possible that they may go up further. However, they have already gone up for four successive weeks and the lowest risk buying opportunities may already be behind us. It may be better to use prudence and wait for a pullback before taking new long positions. What about the internals? The internals are all positive. New high low, advanced decline and up down volume for both NASDAQ and NYSE everything closed above zero. New high low for NASDAQ decline, all the other internals went up. Therefore, we have to conclude that both NASDAQ and NYSE are continuing their up move. The internals are also bullish. At the same time, looking at longer term period, both of them are in a downtrend. Therefore, you may be cautious and not start to take too many long positions. Let's see what conclusion we can arrive at from the market ETFs analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY weekly candle is bullish in color and shape. Daily also went up strongly. Price is close to the upper boundary that is too extended to try to take any swing long trade. NASDAQ ETF QQQ also went up strongly both in weekly and daily charts. Weekly pierced above the memory resistance line. It is too extended to take any long trend and it is in uptrend therefore we are not going to take any short trend. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF Dia same picture weekly and daily are bullish but it is extended so there is no low risk trading opportunity right now. Russell 2000 ETF IWM same picture weekly is strongly bullish. Daily went up came close to the upper boundary level and there is also a memory resistance there. If next week price reverses then IWM may give us a low risk shorting opportunity using stop just above the memory resistance line. From the market breadth analysis and the market ETF analysis we see the same picture. In the daily chart everything is going up 
it is in an uptrend but if we look at a longer term period then all the market ETFs all the broad market indices are in a downtrend in the daily chart price has gone up strongly for several weeks price is extended and there may not be many low risk buying opportunity right now you may wait for a pullback before trying to take new long trades that is the conclusion you can arrive at from the market level analysis however market level is very broad when you drill down into sector level and then further into industry level stocks fundamentals and technicals you are always able to find low risk swing trading opportunities where industry strength fundamental strength and technical strengths or weakness are aligned together one month sector performance we are looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week green bar represents performance of one week prior to the red bar and the blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar together they represent one month of performance any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down all the red bars are to the right of the zero line showing that now for the second week in a row all the sectors went up all the green bars are also to the right of the zero line this shows a strongly bullish picture at the sector level not only that five of the sectors are up for a three review periods further highlighting the strength of the market these five sectors are financials energy materials industrials and consumer discretionary they went up throughout the month as the market has already gone up the low risk buying opportunities may not be easy to find you may wait for low risk opportunities following a pullback instead of buying at the top energy continues to be one of the best performers and utilities continues to be one of the worst performers reviewing past market roundups you can now see that using qh real time sector heat map you could pinpoint the exact turn around point of these sectors and profit from aligning trades with the turn arounds qh sector scorecard and heat map qh analyzes all the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days 5 days etc and assigns scores and heat map color to all the cells cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness instantly you can see looking at the five days column financials and energy at the best performers this week consumer discretionary utilities at the worst performers therefore if you are starting a top-down analysis from the sector level you will look for buying opportunities in financials and energy and shorting opportunities in consumer discretionary and utilities looking to the right you can see that energy was one of the weakest sectors earlier utilities was one of the strongest sectors earlier now they have reversed their roles and in one of the recent market roundups i pinpointed this reversal of role exactly at the time it happened you could do that easily from this sector heat map and scorecard best performing industries of this week we are looking at the industries five days and ten days scores financials is the best performing sector and four of the best performing industries are in that sector these are diversified banks asset management and custody banks life and health insurance and investment banking and brokerage if you look at qh stock scorecard it has five stocks in the 
diversified bank industry. On 26 December 2018, four of them, BAC, C, JPM, and WFC, all of them displayed the unique Q headwind bullish reversal signal at the very bottom. These four stocks went up with extreme pressure on that day. Out of them, C and WFC exhibited bullish pressure U-turn. On top of that, BAC and C displayed indecisive doji candle just before the bullish headwind. All these four stocks have gone up significantly since then and you could use the headwind signal and the other signals to initiate very profitable long trades at the very bottom. At a minimum, you could book profit and exit any short position that you might have at that time. These four stocks displayed multiple technical bullish signals. There is one stock that displayed all the signals together. Which one is that? That is Citibank C. It displayed the bullish headwind signal. It had extreme pressure on that day. It had a bullish pressure U-turn and it also displayed an indecisive doji candle just before the bullish headwind. So Citibank was the strongest technically among all these stocks when you look at the Q technical signals. Citibank is the stock that displayed all the bullish indications through headwind, bullish extreme pressure, bullish U-turn and closing higher after displaying doji at the very bottom. So technically it was the strongest in this industry and Citibank also happened to be the best value stock in this group as you can see from Q Vital stock scorecard. Therefore by combining fundamental and technical analysis using Q systems you could buy all these stocks but if you had to buy only one of these stocks you would buy Citibank because of its stronger technicals as well as fundamentals. Since then, 26 December, Citibank has gone up by a massive 21.4 percent. Q Edge Industry Scorecard and Heat Map. The best performing industries of this week are shown by cyan color under five days column. Diversified banks is one of them. It was weaker earlier, shown by the magenta color scores to the right, and over one month. 10 days and 5 days, the scores are in cyan color showing that it strengthened gradually and now it is the second strongest industry. If we drill down into the stocks, instantly from the stock scorecard, we know that Citibank is the stock with best valuation, optimal valuation, which is shown by cyan color under valuation column. Looking at the three recent quarters earnings growth, we can see that it has decent earnings growth as well. Pays a dividend of 2.8%. Fundamentally, Citibank is the strongest in this group when we combine the valuation with the earnings growth and dividend. This is Citibank using at a glance template. The stock went up sharply right after Christmas last year. In the daily chart at the very bottom it displayed the bullish headwind possible reversal signal. At that time you could apply the bullish headwind trade setup unambiguous checklist and Based on that, you could buy the stock right at the close of this day, putting stop just below recent low. As the stock went up from there, covered the risk distance, you could book at least partial profit. As the industry, fundamental and technical, all were strong, 
there would not be any reason to exit full position you could continue to hold remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run at the right edge it is continuing to be very strong therefore you will continue to hold remaining position with trailing stop there is no need to exit the stock right now that was an analysis of Citibank using industry rotation analysis fundamental analysis and technical analysis I mentioned about few indicators like the extreme pressure and bullish pressure u-turn I will explain this in more detail in the Monday morning meetup these are few new indicators we are going to release I will also discuss the other banking stocks BAC JPM and WFC in the Monday morning meetup what's performing industries of this week Usually we look for shorting opportunities from the worst performing industries. However, industry analysis is only one leg. After doing a complete 360 degrees analysis, sometimes you may avoid shorting in a weak industry and instead anticipate buying opportunities in the coming days. You would not buy immediately as the industry is relatively weak, but you will be ready to buy if the industry and the stocks resume their uptrend. That is a case with home building this week. It is one of the worst performing industries. However, it has several stocks that are good value. These are BLD, TOL and TPH. All of them are continuing to have bullish weekly backdrop candle color that is cyan color these stocks have bullish charts when seen through Q at a glance weekly daily template the industry may be relatively weaker than other industries but these three stocks are technically strong if the industry goes up next week then these fundamentally strong stocks are poised to give low risk buying opportunities Interestingly, all of these three stocks displayed the unique bullish Q headwind reversal signal in both weekly and daily charts at the very lows. That once again shows the tremendous effectiveness of the headwind reversal signal. I will look at TOL through technical charts today and I will look at BLD and TPH in the Monday morning meetup. Before looking at the technical charts, let me look at the home building industry through QH. In QH, the worst performing industries of the week are displayed in magenta color under five days. Home building is one of the weakest industries. You can see earlier it was very weak it gained strength in the middle and weakened again therefore we can expect that on the technical charts it has gone up from the lowest point and now dipped a little bit again now if it starts to go up again it may give trend following long buying opportunities home building industry has multiple stocks among them TPH, BLD and TOL. These three stocks are optimally valued. We know that from the cyan color under valuation column and if you look at the earnings growth you can see they have overall decent earnings growth in the recent quarters and or the recent yearly period. If you combine the valuation and the earnings growth and the dividend you will find TOL to be the strongest among these three stocks therefore if you had to buy only one stock you would look for that opportunity in TOL though the other two stocks are also fundamentally strong they have optimal valuation and decent earnings growth as well 
TOL using weekly daily at a glance template. In the weekly, it displayed the bullish headwind signal that could catch the extreme bottom. Since then, price has gone up. This week, price declined little bit. However, the backdrop candle color is remaining bullish. In the daily, we had the same bullish headwind signal again at the very bottom. Price could never go below that level. Instead, price is gradually going up. Recently, it made a new high, hit the declining white direction line and pulled back little bit. Now, if it starts to go up again and gives us a cyan color candle, that will give us a trend following go with flow long trade opportunity. Accelerating industries, these are the industries that may not be at the forefront yet. They may be behind others but are gaining momentum fast and therefore you will look for buying opportunities here. You saw that four of the best performing industries are from the financial sector. This sector strength is further demonstrated by four financial industries being among the most accelerating industries as well. These are reinsurance, asset management and custody banks, financial exchanges and data, and property and casualty insurance. In asset management and custody banks, you will find JHG and VRTS. Both are value stocks with positive recent quarter earnings growth. These stocks have recovered from recent lows. JHG has a dividend yield of 6.4%. VRTS has a dividend yield of 2.3%. They have either gone up and or broken out of memory resistance. You may look for the next low risk buying opportunity in coming days using technical analysis. In key wage, the accelerating industries are displayed in cyan color under PACE 5 days column. PACE column is the column that calculates acceleration or deceleration. Accelerating industries are displayed in cyan color. Asset management and custody banks was weak earlier. The scores were in magenta color. Under 5 days, you can see the score is already cyan, so the industry is strong already and the pace column is showing that it is accelerating at the same time. When we drill down into the stocks, we can find JHG and VRTS instantly from the cyan color under valuation column, we know these are optimally valued. And Looking at the recent quarterly earnings growth, we can see that both has positive recent quarter earnings growth. They pay dividends as well. Strong fundamental stocks in accelerating industry and the industry is already strong also. Therefore, you will look for buying opportunities here. Let me look at VRTS using Q technical charts. We may review JHG in the Monday morning meetup. VRTS in the weekly chart, it is going up. This week's candle color and shape both are strongly bullish. In the daily chart, it displayed a cyan colored candle on this day. That was a trend following go with flow long trade opportunity. The weekly candle was already cyan at that time therefore it made all the checklist conditions the unambiguous checklist conditions for the go with flow trend following long trade setup you could take the long position right at the close of this candle putting stop just below recent low you could put it below the memory support line from there price went up hit the upper boundary level you could book at least partial profit there with discipline. The industry is strong, accelerating. Fundamentally, the stock is still a value stock. Technically, it is very strong. Therefore, 
in this case you would not have any reason to exit full position you would exit partial position book partial profit with discipline and you will use Q protection signal to apply trailing stop and try to let profit run on the remaining position decelerating industries they may be ahead of other industries now but they are losing momentum therefore you will be careful if you are having long position in any of these industries and look for shorting opportunities from QH sector heat map and scorecard you can see information technology is the most decelerating sector the sector is strong but it is decelerating and four of the most decelerating industries are in that sector these are technology hardware storage and peripherals semiconductors technology distributors and electronic manufacturing services these industries were strong in past couple of weeks but you may be careful if you are holding long positions and you may avoid taking new long positions in these industries because they are decelerating in technology hardware storage and peripherals NCR has earnings nearby on 6th February it has good valuation however it had negative earnings and revenue growth in the last two quarters and one more earnings is nearby it is near both weekly and daily resistance memory trend lines looking at the past weakness of quarterly earnings result and the memory resistance trend lines on technical charts long position holders may protect or book profit you may also look for low risk shorting opportunity if the stock starts to tilt down back to q edge sector scorecard and heat map both in the industry scorecard and sector scorecard the pace column calculates acceleration deceleration acceleration is shown by cyan color deceleration shown by magenta color information technology is the most decelerating sector it has the most magenta color under pace column if we look at the industry scorecard the most decelerating industries are shown by magenta color under pace column technology hardware storage and peripherals is one of them in this industry you can find ncr it has good valuation the valuation is in cyan color however the last two quarters had negative earnings growth and negative revenue growth as well next earning is coming soon there is a chance that next earnings result will also be weak therefore if you have a long position you may be careful and on technical charts it is near resistance let's look at the technical charts ncr using weekly daily at a glance template ncr has recovered from the lows in the weekly chart but it is still in a downtrend and it is approaching the memory resistance in the weekly chart in the daily it went almost straight up from the recent low didn't have any pullback and now it is approaching the memory resistance in the daily as well the price is extended it is not the time to take new long position in ncr instead if it starts to go down from the memory resistance line then you may look for a shorting opportunity those were our regular topics for the weekly market roundup i will discuss some of these stocks and some of the new indicators that we are planning to roll out in the monday morning meeting public webinar you may register for that session from education live class page before i end let me summarize 
the market has gone up for four straight weeks. Many stocks are extended. Many of them didn't pull back to give a low risk buying opportunity. They are extended now. Therefore, you may not try to buy the stocks at the very top of their recent move. Over longer period, the market is still in a downtrend. If you are holding profitable long positions, you may book partial profit at least and or protect your profit using trailing stop or put options. If the market starts to decline from here, then you may look for shorting opportunities. We see that NASDAQ went above the memory resistance. If it now goes below the memory resistance, then it will create a false upside breakout. We also saw that IWM is right at the memory resistance in the daily chart. If the market rolls over, then NASDAQ and IWM may give better shorting opportunities than SPY and DIA. If the market continues to go up, you may try to use the real-time fine-tune chart to take low-risk entries in the long direction or you may wait for a pullback and then enter the trade that will allow you to have a narrow stop loss. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session of Weekly Market Roundup and also in the Monday morning meeting. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.